Hey everybody out there, Asher with The Bench. I have been tagged by Timmy at Imagine Scent to do this video. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna tag some of my fellow reviewers so that they can keep on the tag train. So stay tuned to find out who that's gonna be. This video is what 10 designer fragrances would I keep if I had to throw out all the other designer fragrances I own. So I have to pick 10 and the rest go away. I've gotta be honest with you, this was a hell of a video to make and there are tons and 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 tons
that it is impossible to keep count. It is a little bit expensive because it's a Chanel, you really can't find those at discounters, but it's worth having in your collection. Blue de Chanel is a modern classic, that one has to be in my tin. Now this one's the newest of the bunch, but I had to include something that was just really bright and refreshing for summer wear. And that is where this comes in, John Varvatos Artisan Pure. I really, really like the way Varvatos fragrances smell, this one is no different. Honestly, one of the best designer releases that's come out recently and I will do a video on this at some point. Clementine, Pettigrain, Ginger, and Orange is in this, at least as official notes go, but the strongest note to my nose is actually Neroli, which is not listed. This does get compared to Tom Ford Neroli Portofino Forte, only at a much more affordable price. It's got an awesome Neroli Citrus Open that's just super bright, refreshing, and uplifting, a zesty mid, mainly that pettigrain coming in and mixing with the neroli and the citrus as that starts to fade and a really nice pleasant musky dry down there are no spices here really it's just refreshing and bright you spray this on on a hot summer's day and you are good to go this one's the bomb does anybody say the bomb anymore now i just look like an old moron this one I had to include in my tin. I love it. I loved it from the first time I smelled it. I still love it now. I do not get tired of the way this one smells. Dolce & Gabbana's The One. Just the original Eau de Toilette. I know, I know, the performance sucks, but I do not care. I can still remember the first time I smelled this and the way it made me feel. I was just blown away. I thought it smelled just amazing. Amber, tobacco, and ginger in this one. Very warm, sensual, just a great sexy date night fragrance. I have gotten lots of compliments with this over the years. That's not really the end all be all of fragrances, of course, but it's nice to get a compliment every once in a while. As far as date night fragrances go, or fragrances that I consider almost specialized for date nights, nighttime excursions, whatever, this one is my favorite as far as the scent goes. Just absolutely beautiful, not that expensive. You can pick it up at discounters at a good price now. Dolce & Gabbana. The one. Up next is a fragrance that I have always, always liked, but I think it never really caught on, or at least not majorly. Gucci by Gucci Pour Homme, which I think they've now renamed it just Gucci Pour Homme. The name was kind of stupid, Gucci by Gucci, and if you look it up on Fragrantica, it says Gucci, Gucci by Gucci Pour Homme. Gucci by Gucci takes two of my favorite notes and combines them in fantastic fashion, tobacco and cypress. It's a bit fresh, it's green, a little woodsy, and the tobacco just wraps everything up. It's a fantastic fragrance. I like to wear it in spring and fall. I think the bottle looks great. I dig this little loop. I don't know why. I've given this significant wear over the years. The performance is not great, but the scent to me is spot on. For whatever reason, it just never caught on, but I love this one. That's gonna take me to my other Gucci on this list. If you've watched the channel for a while, you probably know what it is. Yeah, it's discontinued, but I don't care. Gucci Envy. Damn, it smells good. I've got a backup bottle of this right up here, along with Gucci Pour Homme 1 and Gucci Rush. That's like the trifecta of awesome discontinued Gucci fragrances. Of those three, Envy's my favorite. Ginger, incense, sandalwood, and tobacco are in this guy. It's masculine, it's sophisticated, it's refined, it's sexy, a little bit smoky. Great sandalwood note, great ginger note. The opening is fantastic, the dry down is fantastic. I love the whole thing. The only thing that sucks about that is you have to pay a pretty high premium if you wanna get a bottle nowadays. It's almost hard to believe that at one time, Gucci had those three fragrances out all at once and then decided to discontinue all of them, which is another story for another time. Only three to go. Next up, Mugler. Pure Havan. Of the A-Man series, this one's my favorite. There's tobacco, vanilla, and honey in there, and that kind of tells you the direction that that fragrance takes. It's a very sweetened up pipe tobacco. It smells fantastic, as long as you like really sweet, cool weather fragrances. This one, for whatever reason, in cool weather, has gotten me tons of compliments. I love the way it smells. It gives off kind of a cherry vibe with the tobacco. Performance is very good, extremely wearable. There is patchouli in this, just like in the original A-Man, but the patchouli in here is turned down, so it doesn't come across as strong or as powerful as in the original A-Man. In my opinion, nowadays, this is much more wearable. A-Man, pure Havan. It's gonna take me to my second Chanel on the list, Allure Ohm Sport O Extreme. I mean, what can I say about this that hasn't been said? Just a versatile designer compliment magnet. Tonka orange and mint are some of the notes in here. You get a great citric mint opening, and that Tonka dry down is just fantastic. Warm, sexy, sensual, sweet. 
People love the way that one smells, and it's understandable. Versatility on this one, just like Bleu de Chanel, through the roof. You can wear it in almost any situation. Again, it's on the more expensive side, since it is a Chanel, but it's worth it. Chanel Allure Home Sport o Extreme. All right, we have made it to the last of the 10. This one is a total classic in my opinion. It does have its fair share of detractors, uh, but I wear it and give no Fs. Christian Dior Fahrenheit, the original. Leather, vetiver, violet leaf, and lavender, some of the main notes here. This is most famous for having that petrol or gasoline accord right off the top. Some of the more modern batches of Fahrenheit have that dialed back a lot, but if you can get a vintage bottle, then you'll really have that gasoline going at the beginning, which personally I love. With the leather, the violet leaf, lavender, the vetiver, all those notes coming together, Fahrenheit is almost the quintessential masculine fragrance. It can be powerful, in your face, it doesn't really try to be mass appealing. You have to wear Fahrenheit with confidence, or else Fahrenheit is gonna wear you. Which sounds cheesy, but if you wear that with no confidence, it's not gonna work well for you. I love the way it smells. I love the way this vintage one punches me in the face with that gasoline smell right off the top. The first time I smelled it, it blew me away. Had to include it, Dior Fahrenheit. So there we go, that is it. If I had to keep 10 designers, those are the ones I'm keeping. Let me tag a few reviewers here to keep this trend going. Uh, this time I want to tag some people that are kind of up and coming, some guys that are putting in the work trying to grow their channels up. So I'm going to tag three people here. I'm going to tag Dallas with Chaos Fragrances, Chris, Mr. Siaj, and Joshua, Scent Sense. So you guys have been tagged. Make this video. I'm looking forward to seeing it. And everyone that stayed this long, thank you so much for watching. Remember to check out my website, www.gensense.net. More reviews, more lists on there. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much.